My name is uh, Ken Barron, and as Tony said, I'm the chief of staff for Franklin Graham and the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. It's very strange to be here for me. Uh, I'm not a pastor. Uh, I've spoken a few times, uh, and I, I don't even really fit into all the people that are here uh, that have been in the faith all their lives. Uh, you see, I'm a Jew. I'm a Jewish kid from New York. And I came to Christ 14 years ago. It's a blessing to be here. I have a great, uh, a great burden for Israel that I'll talk about. I just want to bring greetings from Franklin Graham, where we just left uh, uh, Oklahoma City. We did a festival this weekend, the weekend before. We were in Birmingham, Alabama where we saw a couple thousand people accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. It was a real blessing. And uh, I want to just, uh, I just want to bring greetings from Mr. Graham, also, uh, not this Dr. Graham, but the other Dr. Graham. Uh, you may remember him, too. Uh, I'll just give you an update that Franklin gives about Mr. Graham's condition. And he asked this question of a group of people the other day, some of you that were there. Uh, he said, uh, how many of you know what thicken is? Anybody here? Raise your hand. A couple of people. Uh, Franklin will tell you that once you get to be Mr. Graham's age, you'll know what thicken is. Thicken is uh, when people get older, as we will all, uh, you aspirate your food. So there has to be a way the muscles relax. So you have to put this stuff called thicken in your food. And it thickens up water. He says it's like your coffee is like coffee jello. So Franklin said to Mr. Graham, Daddy, is that good? No. But other than that, Mr. Graham's doing well. It's a blessing. Uh, he's got a drink thick, and his mind is still alert. He's still uh, uh, praying every day and uh, most of the day. Uh, Franklin will tell you he, uh, he, takes, he gets up in the morning, has his coffee, takes a little nap, uh, watches the news or listens to it best he can. Somebody will read him the news, then he takes a, a, a little nap, then he'll have lunch. Sometimes he'll take a nap while he's eating lunch. And then uh, he uh, prays, and then he takes another nap, and then it's time to go to bed. But he's, he's doing well. We're just proud of Mr. Graham. I, I just want to talk about a couple of things with, uh, with all of you that we're doing. Uh, uh, I, I share this stuff because people don't know it, and just so you give some context to who I am, I'm, uh, like I said, I'm a Jewish kid. I was disowned by my Orthodox Jewish family because I was a drug addict when I was 17 years old and went into a drug program, and uh, just before that, I had encountered a Catholic nun who asked me if I could stop using drugs uh, if she got me into the hospital to detox. See, I was in Houston, too, Pastor. I graduated from the University of Houston, and I was living under a bridge in Houston. And I can share that location with you in a cardboard box, because uh, I didn't have any place to go. I had no friends. I had done everything wrong. Didn't know Jesus, but I did know there was a God. And this Catholic nun said to me, if I can get you into this hospital, will you, uh, will you go in? Will you stop using drugs? And I said, Sister, I can't promise you anything but I need a place to stay, and I went in, I got into, a, after that, she got me into a drug program, and I wound up becoming president of that drug program after living in that residential treatment center for eight years, uh, and uh, that was a blessing, and I didn't know that. I sat on the hospital bed that that nun got me into, and I remember the first time in my life earnestly praying. It was one of those crisis prayers, Lord, get me out of this, and I'll never do it again. Uh, I forgot that for many years and didn't know what was happening. And then uh, uh, President Reagan came to visit that drug program, and the next thing I knew, I was working in the White House uh, for Nancy Reagan as her director of projects and policy. Uh, how does that happen? How, in heaven's name, does that happen? 
to a Jewish kid from New York. I mean, it, it doesn't happen. Uh, after that, after, during that time, I made a lot of friends and I started to call people and say I needed a job uh, in 1986. And lo and behold, uh, without, I'd gotten four or five job offers. It was crazy, but the one I didn't know about was McDonald's. And the guy asked me if I want to go work for McDonald's. I said, yeah, I, well, you know, it's not kind of an upward job working for McDonald's. He said, no, it's an executive job. So we started Ronald McDonald House Charities, which I'm sure you've all heard of. And then uh, I was blessed in having to deal with, uh, I became a, a corporate senior vice president of McDonald's, and I dealt with the things nobody else wanted to deal with. Uh, uh, animal welfare, animal welfare at McDonald's. Think about that. Uh, you give a... You give a cow a Happy Meal toy before you slit his throat. <laughs> and then uh, I also was given nutrition. I was in charge of nutrition at the world's largest food company. Two weeks after I got that job, the movie Super Size Me came out. <laughs> I've been blessed. I've been blessed. During my time at McDonald's, I met a man named Paul Saber. Some of you may know him. He kind of founded the Issachar program. Uh, and Paul spent 10 years witnessing to me and led me to Christ uh, in, in, in Chicago when I was working there. And uh, I called my, my parents because they had kind of re-owned me again after uh, I went to work at the White House. Go figure, people. Well, so, so uh, I'm going to come back to that. I just want to tell you what, what, what's going on. And, and you've talked, we've all talked, and uh, people before me, and uh, Pastor Ronnie, and, and Pastor Graham, and Pastor from Houston uh, have talked about, and Harry, you know, Harry said there's going to be people with more oratory skills than him. I'm here to tell you I'm not one of them, Harry. Uh, but the, uh, uh, we're doing so much, and, and you know Franklin, uh, you all know Franklin Graham and how he speaks. Franklin's been speaking out forever. And the one thing that Franklin, he said this weekend, uh, he says, I don't care what anybody thinks of me. I don't care. He says, I'm only beholden to one person in this world, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And there have been a lot of things he said that I wish he hadn't said. Because I have to deal with the media and, and those people who are not nice. And they're constantly attacking Franklin for things that he does say and some things he doesn't say. Two years ago, he decided to use Facebook, a thing that he told us we couldn't use five years ago because it was just a gossip column. And now we use Facebook quite often. Franklin's got 2.3 million followers. The Billy Graham Evangelistic Association in total has about 6 million uh, followers. And Franklin posts stuff daily. And I encourage you to go and look at his posts on Facebook. They're always interesting and they're always timely and they're always about something going on in the world. Last year, uh, well, about six years ago, Pastor Ross Rhodes said to Franklin, you ought to go around to every state, uh, all 50 states, and preach the gospel. And Franklin said, oh, that's, that's, that's too much. We couldn't do that. Well, last year, that sunk into Franklin's head. And he saw, as all of you are seeing, this great revival coming to this country, as everybody's talked about. And what a better year to do it than 2016. The year when, and we've seen enough stuff go on in this country, and you all know it, and you've all talked about it. You've seen it go on. Uh, we were just in Israel, Franklin and I and uh, uh, Skip Heitzig. Uh, uh, Dr. Graham said well, one of his close friends, Skip Heitzig, and, and uh, he, we were just in Israel. We met with Prime Minister Netanyahu, and uh, we spent about an hour and a half with him. And he said the difference between Christians and Jews are that Jews cannot forgive their enemies. That was a very interesting statement. It's hard when you see what's going on in the persecution in this world. Franklin's been at the forefront of the persecution, not only in this country, but in all the Arab countries, Muslim countries, 
Latin America, Africa, India, uh, every place. And he's not shy to speak the truth. He's not shy to tell America what's right and wrong, according to the Bible. There's nothing, there's nothing that is it. I talked to Ross Rhodes the other day. I said, Ross, he was speaking about the, the Holy Spirit, and I finally realized after these short years of Christian that the Holy Spirit is really us. It's in us. It is us. If you believe. To those that don't believe, uh, the gospel is foolishness. But to us, it's the power of God. And that Holy Spirit is in us. If it's not in you and it's not part of you, then it's hard to believe all of this. And we in this room are seeing what is happening in this world, but others are not seeing it. So how do we get that message across to them? So Franklin is going to go preach in every state in the Union starting in January. And we, what we want you to do, what we want you to do is join with us in that effort. Now, there are a lot of people. Tony has been just an incredible human being. I'm telling you, we so admire, and Franklin so admires Tony and, and, and General Boykin for what they do. Franklin is very close with the general. And Tony's been leading this charge for a long time, as you know. There are other people leading charges. And everybody is looking at 2016. It's not just us in this room. There's a lot of people out there that are looking to do something in 2016. And if you're doing that, which we hope you will do as part of this revival, rally around Franklin's rally in your state. It's only an hour, one hour in that state. We'll release the dates on October 6th of where we're going to be. And I just encourage you as a focal point to join with us in that effort as we join with Tony in something he's been doing for years. It's an amazing thing. I'll talk tomorrow a little bit in the panel about what we're doing with our rapid response team and how we're helping with uh, in the area of civil disobedience and some of the things that others have talked about. There's a lot going on with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. And I'm so proud to be part of it. And there's no reason other than God that I should be there. No reason. A New York Jew, a New York Jewish drug addict. Now, how did I get to be the chief of staff of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association? <laughs> Somebody said, we got the first black president, and we got a Jew running the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. <laughs> it's crazy. Now, I, my time is up. I just want to close with this. The rest of the story. When I called my parents to tell them I had accepted Christ, my father's 85 years old in a wheelchair. I said, Dad, I have to tell you. So, oh, Kenny, how are you? Because I, I never talked to him. I said, look, I want to let you know that uh, last night I prayed to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Dead silence. Then he starts to cry. I said, oh, I'm just going to get disowned again. My mother gets on the phone, typical Jewish mother. She sees him crying. She says, what did you say to your father to get him so upset? I said, well, I told him that last night I prayed to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Dead silence. My father's still crying. She said, he's not crying tears of sadness. He's crying tears of joy. Because 28 years ago, when we were looking for help for you with your drug problem, we found Jesus too. So... Our story is all about leading people to Christ, sharing the gospel on the, as the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. For over 70 years, Mr. Graham preached the gospel, and Franklin's picked up the mantle to do that. Samaritan's Purse helps people all over the world and in this country. We'll do our part as we can in sharing the gospel with Jesus. We'll try to impact the culture, and we'll try to help the churches as much as we can 
with all the tools that we have in our hands. But it's going to be up to you guys to make it all happen for discipleship and for keeping that in the top of mind in everybody's lives. Thank you, Tony, for having me. It's such a blessing. I don't deserve this honor of speaking to all of you, but thank you all for listening. God bless. My good friend, Dr. Ronnie Cole.